Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars. Welcome to another PlayStation review. Today's review is for Surviving the Aftermath from Paradox Interactive on the PlayStation 4. However, it is playable on PlayStation 5 and the footage you're seeing is of me doing just that. Now, what is Surviving the Aftermath? Well, Surviving the Aftermath is a post-apocalyptic city-building simulation type game. Um, the kind of games that Paradox Interactive kind of specialise in, really. Um, I've played a lot of the Paradox Interactive games. I'm a big fan of City Builders. And any of you that know me and follow my content know that this is right up my street, this sort of game. Uh, very relaxed, very, very chilled, um, and a lot of fun to play. I have to be honest, I'm really enjoying my time with this one. Now, this was priced in the UK at $19.99, and there is an expansion that you can add to it for a further $19.99. Uh, I haven't chosen to do that as yet, but if I do put an awful lot more time into the game, and I really continue to enjoy it, it is something I will consider doing. Um, so, essentially, what you do is you start off at the beginning of this game, um, you can customise the game however you want, even though it's very, very light on modes. There's essentially just one mode. But because there's so many ways to customise that mode, um, it does give quite a little bit of replayability, I suppose. So you can customise the map that you're going on to uh, in regards to how challenging you want it to be, um, how many catastrophes will take place in your event, in your game, um yeah how many how you want the environment to be is it going to be really harsh are you going to make it a little bit easier uh what type of survivors you're going to interact with are they going to be um has supportive helpful or more aggressive and will attack you more often uh what idea ideology do you focus on um uh, do you fo focus on the things like the people or the tech um, and then you can also choose like two specialists to start the game with and the specialists will be um, characters that will essentially specialize in a certain area so you can have a fighter you can have a scout a scientist a scavenger things like that um, and then you could also then customize your flag and name your colony and then you thrust into the world and then you've got to kind of put like a makeshift camp down and then you build from there. Um, you've got to kind of make sure everybody's got uh, living quarters. And at the beginning of the game, you kind of start off in like makeshift tents and things like that. And as you progress through the game, as you would imagine with a game like this, um, when you research new technologies, you can improve the structures and uh, start building better um, facilities, better homes for the people in your colony. So there is like a tech tree. So you go in there and you once you get some like research points, you can start researching the tech tree and start improving uh, the camp, improving uh, your colonists, um, opening new options to build, all that kind of stuff. And if you've played these games, you, you will understand what I'm talking about in regards to the research struck tech tree. It's not particularly difficult, difficult to follow. Um, so you'll set up your base camp, you, know, you set up your tents, and then you need to ensure that there's enough food and water for everybody to drink and eat. So you'll put down like um, your water, so you can put like piers out to the shore to get water. You can put like um, into the ground like water taps and things like that, making sure you've got enough water and food for your colonists. Um, and then you put like um, other things out into the forest, trap traps and things like that and things to collect berries to make sure you're getting like fruit and meat and all that kind of stuff and fishing piers so you get fish um, and then also you obviously need to make sure you're getting enough resources so you set up like work areas scattered across the map uh, to gather resources such as, such as wood plastic um, food as i've mentioned and then one thing this game does i think really really well and it's a really nice twist on it there's like these random events that will take place uh, that will give you like basic scenarios like there might be a survivor turns up at the gate and you could choose whether to let them in or not um, and sometimes they will benefit your colony and sometimes they will definitely hinder it and there will be a threat so you've got to think on your feet really in regards to people that turn up at the gate um, and there'll also be random events within the camp that you've got to kind of figure out. There might be a problem with someone's living quarters you might have to sort out. There might be some medical emergencies, um, all that kind of stuff. And it gives you these random events and then you've got to decide what you're going to do about them. 
Um, so obviously as well, with it being like a post-apocalyptic game, there's radiation to deal with, which you can deal with later in the game by putting work areas to get rid of the um, radiation type areas to keep everybody fit and healthy. But occasionally some of your colonists will get radiation sickness. So you need to basically, your specialist, you need to go to the world map um, and the specialists that you have at your camp, you can send them out into the world um, to certain locations and they will scavenge those areas. Some of those areas will be um, barren in a sense that there's nobody else there. So they will search for supplies, whether it be food, clothes or research points. Uh, but some of them will have antibiotics, medicine, um, parts, all this kind of stuff. But you also need to expand on the map and scout further out to get better supplies. And the further you get into the game, the more difficult it gets in a sense of you will come across like uh, gang members and things like that. And they will fight back against you. And this is out in the world, but also back at your colony as well. Um, you can be attacked at your colony by um, people attacking your camp, but also like from creatures like rats and other mutated things. Um, so I, I really like this game in a sense of it's really chilled and relaxed to play depending on the type of game that you choose to play. So I went into this with a fairly relaxed experience, you know. Um, I chose some of the easier options, um, not to make it massively challenging. And I always do that early in games so that I can learn to play them. And then when I think I've got sufficient knowledge as to how to play it, I'll sometimes restart it with that knowledge and up the difficulty level um, and that's something that you could do here but to be honest anybody of you out there who likes to play these type of games like these city builder games uh, it's actually in a lot of ways a bit like Frostpunk um, if you've played that game it's very very similar in a lot of ways to that sort of game but a little bit easier to pick up and play this one it's not as difficult to pick up and learn this one's fairly easy I mean um, you don't off as long as you remember to make sure there's enough food and enough water generally speaking uh, you're going to be okay in this game um and obviously sending you specialists out into the world to make sure that they're going to get supplies and medicine you're definitely going to need lots of medicine and antibiotics and then you just keep expanding and research your technology to get wet better weapons better buildings better defenses against anybody that would like to attack your camp and it, it's quite um, a decent learning curve, again, depending on the type of game that you set yourself up from the beginning. So I do strongly advise if you're going to play this yourselves, give yourself an easy experience to start with until you've learned to play the game and then maybe kind of restart it and um, try it again then with the difficulty levels turned up a little bit. But I'm not going to lie, I'm having fun with this game. This is actually a really good um, almost like a survival city builder game uh, I'm finding it quite rewarded I'm finding it quite relaxed there are some like radio stations um, that you can click on now I thought they were going to be like voice and they were going to be like people talking on the radio stations but it's not it's, it's, it's basically just click on a different radio station and it's just another version of different elevator music as I call it so again it's one of those games that you can listen to with your Spotify list going and have a pretty chilled out experience I'm really quite enjoying this it's almost it reminds me at some points as well of Fallout Shelter like a really in-depth version of like Fallout Shelter if you've ever played that game but this is a game I do actually recommend. I think the price point's decent at $19.99. And there's an awful lot of time you can put into this game. So I'm going to give this one a pretty strong 8 out of 10, actually. Having a lot of fun with this one. And I think, guys, if you out there like to play these sort of games, I would definitely suggest that you pick this one up because I think you're going to have a lot of fun with it. I've had no issues at all either with any crashes or anything like that. But do bear in mind, I am playing it on a PlayStation 5. So if you're going to go into this, playing it on a base PlayStation 4 or even a PlayStation Pro, you might want to do a bit of research online to see if there are any issues with that. But I certainly have not had any issues at all on a PlayStation 5. So I hope you found this review useful, guys. I'll be back clearly and obviously with plenty more reviews on the channel very, very soon.